The 8 inch Dobsonian telescope is a heck of a way to start out in astronomy. This is my first real telescope I ever bought and a lot of people highly recommend that the 8 inch Dobsonian is one of the absolute best bangs for your buck whenever you first get into the world of astronomy. But a lot of people always ask, can you use it for astrophotography too? And tonight, I want to help you guys answer that. Hello everybody and welcome back to Amateur Astronomy and Storm Chasing. Thank you guys so much for joining me tonight. And real quick before I get started, if you guys haven't yet, please be sure to subscribe down below. That way you don't miss out on anything that I upload. So, the 8 inch Dobsonian Telescope. Can you use it for astrophotography? Well, yes you can, but at the same time, no, you really can't. Um, to sum it up really quickly, for deep sky astrophotography, uh, you're better off looking elsewhere. Is it possible? Yeah, kind of, sort of, which I'll show you tonight uh, with the Orion Nebula and maybe even the Andromeda Galaxy as well. But where this thing does kind of shine is uh, imaging the moon. I've had some pretty good success with that. And some planets as well, which I will also show you guys. So yeah, it's a really good starter package, I feel like. But if you're looking to get into deep sky astrophotography, you're better off looking elsewhere. So... Now let's just wait on it to get dark, and we can go ahead and get started. Alright, now it's gotten nice and dark, and I've got a Ryan lined up here in the scope sites. So, let's go ahead and see if we can get some images of it. Now, as always on this channel, I want to keep it really, really simple. All we're using is just a T-Rank here, and my camera. And that's going to be it. So I'm go ahead and get the get my camera attached to the Dobsonian here, and then we'll go ahead and see what we can get. This T-ring setup here is really, really simple. All you do is find a T-ring that matches your specific camera brand, and just screw it in. And then once you have that screw on your camera, you just screw the camera straight onto the telescope. Now, with the camera attached to the telescope. You need to find a bright star, planet, or even a cell phone tower with a light on it way off in the distance to set your focus on. You can see here now I've got Sirius actually lined up in the frame. And you can see actually as I adjust my focus on my telescope, it adjusts the focus of the star. And so what you'll need to do is go in and get that just as pinpoint as possible. And that right there seems to be pretty close to me. Okay, now that you have your focus and everything set, you need to go ahead and line up your target inside the telescope here. Um, and again, tonight, like I said earlier, I wanted to use the Orion Nebula simply because it's uh, easily one of the brightest object, uh, one of the brightest deep sky objects and really easy to find here in the viewfinder of my camera. And it's honestly really one of the only objects that you're going to be able to uh, shoot deep skywise with this Dobsonian here for a few reasons that I'll explain just here in a second. Okay, now this is actually video from the camera attached to the telescope. And these stars that you see here is actually the sword hilt in the Orion constellation. And right here in the very middle is where the Orion nebula is going to be. Now this small collection of stars that you see here in the middle of the screen right now is actually the location of M42. That small grouping of stars there is known as the trapezium, or basically the core of the Orion Nebula itself, pretty much the absolute brightest part of M42. And that's one easy way to always find it whenever you're looking for it at night. Okay, and here you can see some of my settings here on my camera. I'm actually going to go in and shoot in raw mode here. Always make sure whenever you're doing astrophotography to have your camera set to raw mode. That way you get the best quality of images. And okay, here is your first issue when trying to do deep sky astrophotography with the Dobsonian telescope. Because of the focal length and it's not on a motorized tracking mount, the Earth's rotation is going to cause star trailing very, very quickly. Now the focal length on this specific telescope is 1200 millimeters, which is pretty far out there. I mean, of course there's telescopes that go way, way deeper than this one, 
but compared to my William Optic Z61 with the fairly wide field focal length of 360 millimeters, this thing goes quite a bit deeper. And again, with it not being on a tracking mount, we're gonna get started trailing pretty quickly. Here, I'll show you an example here. We'll go with an exposure of say, uh, four seconds, which is pretty modest in the astrophotography world. Now, I've got my ISO set up really high here just for the sake of uh, doing this video. But let's go ahead and take a shot and we'll see. And oh yeah, one other thing, be sure to use a remote shutter release cable or you know some kind of remote shutter whenever you're trying to do astrophotography like this. Because anytime you bump that telescope, it's going to throw off your shot. So, let's see, let's double check here and see. Oops, it has floated out of frame. All right. Let's get it lined back up here. It may be hard to see, but actually right there is the trapezium still. So let's go ahead and take an image. And you can see there it is. All right, let's go back and review this image now. Okay, as you can see there, even with a four second exposure, yes, we did get some pretty extraordinary color there out of the nebula itself, but you can see there's also some extreme star trailing in this at just four seconds. Yeah, it's a start, but you're not gonna be able to get far with your images with star trailing like that. So, let's get back and turn down our exposure time. Let me adjust the telescope here just a little bit more. Okay. All right, ISO still on 6400. Let's turn our shutter speed down now to about two seconds and see what we can get. Okay. Now that one there is a little bit better, but you can see once we do zoom in, there's still some pretty significant star trailing. And look, that difference in two seconds there cut down on quite a bit of the light around the nebula as well, especially here in the outer edges. You can still see the core of the trapezium there pretty well. but it's not quite as bright as the four second exposure. So now let's go ahead and go down to just one second. Now imagine here we will start getting some actually usable images. All right, let's go ahead and try it again. And now here, it doesn't look, look like we have very much star trailing whatsoever. There's still a little bit though. You can see if I get really zoomed in, there's some significant trailing going on, but not nearly as bad. But, as you can see now, you can barely see just the interior of the nebula right there. None of these outer gases are appearing. So that's what you start running into whenever you try deep sky astrophotography with a Dobsonian telescope. Just the sheer focal length, not being on the motorized tracking mount, severely limits you in your overall exposure times. And with those very short exposure times, you're gonna be severely limited to what you can actually photograph uh, deep sky wise. Uh, something like, I wish I could try and show you guys the Andromeda Galaxy right now, but unfortunately it's way over in the western sky, which is where a lot of my light pollution is currently. So I can't really show you that, but I do feel like M42 is probably an even better example just because of simply how bright it is, especially there in the core. And uh, yeah, with it being one of the absolute brightest deep sky objects there is out there, that's pretty much the upper limits of what you're gonna be able to shoot deep sky wise. But whenever it comes to planets and the moon and things of that nature, that's where this Dobsonian here starts to shine. Okay. 
Now here is a much, much better target. Here is the moon, which I believe it is roughly like 32% uh, wax and crescent snot. But you can see here, this is still on the exact same settings as we took that Orion photo. Uh, one second at 6400 ISO. And you can see the, the bright side of the moon is completely blown out. But it's really cool because you can actually see some of the dark side of the uh, craters and everything. Which that's really cool. So let's go ahead and turn down exposure significantly. And now you can see that's making a pretty big difference. But we also need to turn down our ISO quite a bit as well. Even something down in the two to 400 range. Let me turn my exposure back up there. This is actual footage from the camera itself attached to the telescope. Now, fortunately with this camera that I have attached to the uh, telescope in video mode here, I can't really adjust the exposure too very much. But you can definitely see some of the interesting shadows there. A waxing crescent moon is by far my most favorite moon to shoot, by the way. Just the contrast there with all the different shadows, it makes this for a much more interesting picture compared to, say, you know, something like a full moon. And as you can see, the moon shows up much, much brighter. It's much easier to photograph with a Dobsonian telescope just like this one. Now, I'll actually go ahead and link a video up above right now where you can see where I pretty much do just that with this exact setup here. And I'll also go in and show you some of the uh, bottle lenses and everything so you can get, actually get a much closer look at the moon. But I've gotten some, in my opinion anyways, some beautiful images of the moon uh, shot through the Stopsonian telescope. And even when photographing the moon, you learn some really, really good editing techniques that can lead over into deep sky astrophotography as well, such as uh, learning how to stack your images and everything like that, and going, you know, going in and playing through curves and all that good stuff in Photoshop. So it's a great, great place to start if you're looking to get into deep sky astrophotography eventually. And that uh, goes on to the planets as well, because as some of you may know, the way to really get good images of the planets is to actually take videos of them, and you go in and use different software that stacks individual frames of those videos to get those images of the planets. And that's exactly what I did here with both Jupiter and Saturn. Now I'll also go ahead and link another video up above right here where you can see uh, I show you exactly how I image Jupiter again with the same setup just using a Bartle lens. And that is where I think the Dobsonian kind of, I'm not really going to say excels at astrophotography, but it's definitely something that you can play around with for sure. And you're most certainly not wasting your time because you learn so much with editing and you're it's the editing process really is what makes a absolutely great image and with these images that I just showed you you know I'm, I've still got a lot to learn in the editing department but you can see with the focal length and everything that there there's certainly the chance that you know you can get an absolutely stunning shot with this setup right here so that pretty well sums it up really uh, yeah you can use a Dobsonian telescope for astrophotography. Not necessarily deep sky astrophotography, but whenever it comes to things like the moon and the planets, it's an absolutely great place to start. And even on top of that, this thing is a monster whenever it comes to visual use. I've seen uh, a good handful of nebulas. The Andromeda Galaxy looks really cool through here. And yeah, this thing is its a great starting point for anybody that's just interested in astronomy in general. Hopefully, uh, you guys learned a thing or two. Uh, I always enjoy getting the daub, daub out here because I kind of neglect it now with my other setup. I appreciate y'all joining me tonight, and again, I hope y'all learned a thing or two. And as always, thank y'all so much for watching, and I hope you enjoy.